Hey, welcome to Midtown Comics TV. I'm Jose Ramos. I'm Jennifer Ewing. And guess what this week is? Alan's birthday. Oh man, that's right. Mm hmm Where is Alan? I thought it's... It's all over. It's all... it's... it's over. What? I'm so old now. Decrepit. Alan, you're not even 30 yet. Life used to be so simple. Barry Allen was the Flash. Hal Jordan was Green Lantern. Darkhawk was cool. Loki was a guy and leading villains in a weird war against the heroes, calling it acts of vengeance. I'm just gonna have my medicine here. What are you drinking? It's root beer. It's okay. Barry Allen is the Flash. What? Hal Jordan is still Green Lantern. Darkhawk is cool again. So the world isn't completely different now? A lot of things are actually still the same. Screw it. I'm out of here. Let's start the recommendations. Hmm. The Sword, number 21, continuing on what's just seeming to be an epic conclusion to this book. In my opinion, it is the most underrated, underread book right now that's being released. It's phenomenal. It mixes Lord of the Rings, regular superhero stuff, everything you could possibly want. Not only should you go pick this up, if you haven't read any before, go back and pick up the trades. They're listed very nicely. Earth, fire, water, go get them. Superman Secret Origin, issue number four. This is a continuation of Superman's early days, um, beginning in this issue with the arrival of Parasite. This also has a fantastic scene where Jimmy Olsen becomes Superman's pal. It's great if you've never read Superman before. If you have, it also has nice little insights into the characters that you might not have remembered from the old days. So definitely check this out this week. World's Finest issue four. It's the last issue of the World's Finest miniseries. Very sad because it's been very fun. This issue we finally get Superman teaming up with Dick Grayson as the new Batman. About time. There's also some fun with Damian Wayne and Batgirl. And, because who doesn't love a big frickin' robot that looks like two heroes combined into one, the giant composite Superman robot. It's a good romp. Check it out. New Avengers number 61. Lots more build up to the siege. We get to see Steve Rogers in action again, see how the villains react to that. You get Captain America and Monkeys and Spider Women and Spider Men. All in one issue, all combined. Also out this week is Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin. This is issue number seven. For me, just getting back from the merry old UK, it feels at home because it's set in London with Squire and Knight. In the process, we get on track of an interesting plot that comes arising, and I don't want to tell you anything more because I'll give it away. So just pick it up and read it, and you'll really enjoy it. Irredeemable number 10. Imagine if the Justice League had all their dirty laundry aired out on an MTV show, kind of like uh, Jersey Shore. That's this issue. Uh, you get to see really dirty secrets from all sorts of heroes, random villains show up. You don't even need to know who they are. They're there, they're doing evil things, that's all that really matters. It's a great read, Mark Wade's doing fantastic things in this book. Pick it up. Now. Thor 606. This is concluding the Latveria Asgard storyline. Doctor Doom has taken control of the Destroyer, one of the few things that can give Thor a really, really vicious fight. Asgardians are warring with horrible Asgardian abomination cyborgs. Uh, Loki might actually be trying to help. And the stage is set for the siege. If you've been following Thor, if you just like Thor at all, check it out. Fantastic Four, issue 575. This is a new story arc by writer Jonathan Hickman. In this series, Mole Man returns and asks the Fantastic Four for help as there's chaos in the underworld. This has to do with the High Evolutionary's secret city that is possibly going to destroy the world. You know, it happens. Green Lantern number 50. Besides the fact that it's a Black Knight tie-in. Besides the fact that it's probably, in my opinion, the best written book for the last few years, we get a very huge revelation here that sort of turns a lot of DC on its ear. I don't want to ruin anything for you, so if you aren't reading this book, Go read it now, and if you have been, you should be salivating because this book is great. You're gonna buy it. I trust you. You have good taste. So, Fox has a new TV series, Human Target. If you've seen it, you'll know then that it's a really fun show based around a bodyguard who's probably crazy, played by the hunky Mark Valley. But 
did you know that this is based on a DC Comics character? The first human target appeared in 1953. It was Fred Venable, a guy who needed money, so he used to pose as people who were targeted for death. After he got conned by the mob, thankfully he was saved by Batman and Robin, but we never saw him again. The real human target we all know and love, Christopher Chance, was introduced in Action Comics in 1972, and he was created by Len Wein and Carmen Infantino. Now, if Len Wein sounds familiar, that's because he also created Wolverine, another popular character out there. When Chance was a child, he actually saw his father murdered by a lone shark that was out to get him for a debt. Blaming himself for not being able to save his father, Chance decided he would dedicate his life to helping those who felt they couldn't go to the police for help. Chance ended up becoming a skilled fighter, marksman, mimic, an amazing actor. He had specially designed masks that would make him look just like his clients We could pull the assassins out of hiding. He was a jack of all trades. He was just really good at what he did. Chance's stories were high in action and very James Bond-esque. Occasionally he would team up with other DC comic heroes like Sea Devils and he even once saved Batman by pretending to be Bruce Wayne. In 1992, Rick Springfield started on a Human Target TV show. Yeah, it was, it was pretty lame. It didn't last very long. Just, just think about it for a second. And we're done. In 1999, Peter Milligan did a Human Target miniseries after the character hadn't been seen in a lot of years. He took a more psychological approach to the stories. It was less high action and more about the fact that Chance, now having lost his face in a fight gone bad, had to rely on his disguises just to interact with the outside world. He even took it to a point where he began to wonder if he even had a personality of his own or if he was just pieces of all the people he'd impersonated. Milligan continued that approach with the character in an ongoing Human Target series that lasted for a couple of years. A couple of the story arcs are available in trade, so check it out. Well, that's all we have this week from Intel Comics TV. Make sure you check us out on comicmix.com. Crazy Sexy Geeks, this series. That's us. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, a lone shark. It just sounds like there's a shark out there that has a lone written on it, and you want him to swim and hate him. Chase ended up becoming a skilled marksman. Boo? Chance. What'd I call him? Chase. <laughs> Why do I keep wanting to call him Chase? Chase's stories actually can know what Chance. Chance. Make sure you check us out on comicmix.com. That's not going to work because I hiccup. <laughs> <laughs> Is it bad that I hear the theme in the background in my head right now? <laughs> 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 uh -huh.